He is Jalen Rose. I am David Jacoby. We what are Jalen and Jacoby. What is it that we do, Jalen? We get the people! What they want. Isaiah Thomas was playing in a Seattle Pro-Am game and scored 81 points. 81 points. You know when someone scores 81, Jalen Rose is going to get involved. So he got out the phone, and Isaiah Thomas is going to join us later on in the show. You don't want to miss that. But we start with one of the newest Los Angeles Lakers to be added to the roster. Russell Westbrook had his introductory press conference. Here's what he had to say. When I got drafted uh, in the NBA, um, that was me proving people wrong. If I go to college, go to UCLA from the inner city, that was me proving people wrong. Um, just making it out the hood was proving people wrong. Uh, I don't need to do that anymore. As you know, Brian is one of the best players to play this game. Um, and his, his ability to be able to kind of do everything on the floor um, allows me to be able to just figure it out. Um, I'm coming to a championship caliber team, and my job is to make sure that I'm able to make his game easy for him. Um, and I'll find ways to do that throughout the game. Jalen, ever since this deal was made with the Wizards to bring Westbrook to Los Angeles to join LeBron, there's been so much discussion about his fit with the team. How do you think he will fit with this team? I love this and you know how much I love Russ. You fit in anywhere when you average a triple double for a season, ladies and gentlemen. News flash. That's what he did last year. I just wish the late great Nipsey Hussle would be there to see Russ play in the purple and gold. Because remember when he passed, the kind of numbers that he put up when he played against the Lakers, the 20-20-20. If you know, you know. With that being said, Russ is just a sign of maturity, Jacoby. Like, mm. as you start to get older, you remember when we used to be mean mugging in the 90s? You know what I'm saying? And you walk around with your fist balled up all of the time. That didn't mean you could fight more. That didn't mean you was tougher. That just meant you were me mugging. And then as you started to get older, you're like, I ain't got to necessarily do that to get my point across. And that's how Russ is approaching this situation. He's been an MVP of the league. Early in his career, he's played in the NBA Finals. He's played with some of the best players in the game. Harden, KD, Paul George, Sabonis, and so Bradley Beal, now LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And so he's been a chameleon in a lot of ways. And this comes full circle. I remember when Russ was in college, and do you realize he basically averaged nine points mm -hmm. for his college career? And now all of a sudden, he's a guy that's breaking the big O's triple-double record in the NBA. He's gonna help the Lakers in particular, when LeBron's off the floor and when LeBron and or AD are in street clothes. That's why you bring in Russ, because he doesn't play like your normal guard that's in his low 30s. Absolutely. Now, we always say the best players you put around LeBron James are rim protecting big and three and D people, shooting. You want shooting around LeBron because he's such a maestro with the basketball. I think a lot of people just point to Russell Westbrook's lack of a jump shot, but here's the thing. He averages a triple-double. He gets you 10 <laughs> assists, 10 rebounds, and at least 10 points every single game. And they did bring in Malik Monk, who can shoot, and Kendrick Nunn can shoot. Like, they do have Carmelo. some shooting around him. Carmelo, great point. He's a catch-and-shoot guy now in his career, basically. But that second unit, when LeBron is on and off the floor, they're such a different team last year that the addition of Russell Westbrook is really going to help that. When you look at those numbers, I think this is one of the main motivating factors to bring Russ in, don't you? And also, you know how much I love this sound. He's going to bring speed. Just mm -hmm. sure volume of pace changing ends of the floor. Some of LeBron's best plays in transition with the Lakers he was out in transition with Caruso. That's why a lot of people were surprised they let him go, a young ascending player, because he played faster and got out of transition and matched LeBron. That's what Russ is gonna be doing. There are gonna be times where the Lakers get the ball in bounds, and Russ is gonna be laying the ball up with less than four seconds on the other end of the court. That's what he's gonna bring, and a relentless competitive spirit. Yep.
It is that competitive spirit, and that analysis you just gave us was so on point, but there's one thing that I strongly disagree with. Russell Westbrook is still going to be mean mugging. He's still going to be mean mugging. <laughs> That's the attitude that he plays with when he is on the floor. He just mean mugs. That's his default setting when he's playing basketball. Big shout out to Russell Westbrook and the Lakers. I, for one, definitely think this is going to be a good fit, and they will win the Western Conference if healthy. Brody. However... The man that he is replacing, Dennis Schroeder, was once offered a four-year, $84 million contract by the Lakers. He turned it down. He bet on himself. Well, he now signed a one-year, $5.9 million deal with the Celtics. What do you think about the saga of Schroeder over the past six months? So the NBA doesn't provide the normal level of job security that people are used to in professional environments. Around 20 to 25% of players that you saw play in the league this year won't be in the league next year. And wow. what happened for Dennis Schroeder, there was a game of musical chairs at the point guard position. And when the music stopped, there wasn't no deal for him. You had people, uh, young players like SGA and Trey Young getting deals along with Luka. And then you have elder statesmen moving around like Conley, uh, getting paid like Conley and Lowry and CP3. But then here's the other thing that also takes place. The gift and the curse of playing in a large market. Yeah, in a large market, your numbers become like they're on steroids and you get more appearances and you get more show. But when you struggle, it works in reverse. So when you're playing alongside LeBron in the purple and gold and you're struggling and they getting bounced in the first round, like Ben Simmons, somebody got to be the scapegoat. And Dennis Schroeder ended up being that in this situation. I hate that he lost that bread initially. It's going to be good that he's with the Celtics. He's going to help them pick up their pace with Tatum along with Brown. And he'll eventually recoup that money. Jalen. Last night, we had a game in Summer League between the Rockets and the Pistons featuring Jalen Green and Cade Cunningham, and it did not disappoint. Here's what Jalen Green had to say after the game. But you've made it known that you felt like you're the best prospect in this draft. How big has your chip been playing here in Las Vegas? Um, my chip been super big. It started at draft night when I got drafted number two. Um, I felt like I was number one, but I mean, it's just the work I gotta put in. I can't, I gotta keep the tip on my shoulder from where I'm from. My family installed it into me, so I'm just keeping it better every day. Jalen, these two showed out last night. What did you think about the Jalen Green versus Cade Cunningham showdown? I just appreciate so very young in their careers that they understand the magnitude of the situation as number one and number two picks. They understand fans are there to watch them play. These games are being televised. Other NBA players, whether from other teams or on their current squads, are flying to Vegas to come show support and do workouts. But then the game starts, and these dudes show up. Mm -hmm. That's what impresses me. Because the difference so many times between making it to this level and succeeding at this level is constantly being able to bring it when it matters the most. And both of these guys are doing that so very young in their career. That's what's impressive to me. And it's Summer League, and I'm not going to overreact to a couple Summer League games, but each one of these athletes had these moments, like that pass right there, and then behind the back three that Cade had. They both had these moments where you're like, ooh, this is... This is going to be special. Like, these two seem like a very special. You know what? I am going to overreact to two summer league games. I love these two players. I love these two players. But it is now time to turn our attention to the National Football League and Seattle. Remember all the grumblings about Russell Wilson not being happy and protection being one of those reasons? Well, the Seahawks have helped their defense. They put out an offer to Jamal Adams, who I love. But they haven't put out an offer for Dwayne Brown, the left tackle that is so key to protecting Wilson. Jalen, are they doing enough to keep Russell? Us happy in Seattle. And don't sleep on another weapon they have in the backfield, Chris Carson. A lot of people are going to be excited to have him on their fantasy roster. So let me get this right. You have Metcalf and Lockett. You have mm -hmm. Russell Wilson, arguably the best, one of the best quarterbacks in the game and definitely has one of the best deep balls in the game. In order for him to be able to throw that right, he's going to need protection. And last year, he was sacked more than any quarterback in the NFL. His left tackle is a free agent, Seattle. 
and you don't find a way to get him his bread? Like, w w why don't you guys just start helping him and Sierra find a house somewhere else next year? Like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> if you don't take care of nothing, take care of his left tackle. Am I bugging Jacoby? Well, it's not just a football thing, it's a health thing. Like, if you get sacked more than any other quarterback in the league, that means you're likely getting hit more than any other quarterback in the league. You need to stay on the field. You need your quarterback to be happy. Just give these quarterbacks what they want. If you have someone like Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson in your uniform, as a franchise, it is a duty to do whatever you can to keep them in the uniform. I suggest, and not suggest, I suspect that they <laughs> will get this done because it's just so key to have that left tackle to anchor the line and keep Russell Wilson's uniform clean. I can't wait to see Metcalf again, too. And you know what else I can't wait to see? Our guest who is coming up next, Jalen Rose, who is joining us in just mere seconds. Isaiah Thomas will be joining the show. I know you saw him emotional on social media after his big game. He comes to talk to us about his return this year to the NBA. Coming to you live from Pier 17 in the South Street Seaport District of Manhattan and brought to you by Chase. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Rose, who is joining us on the program right now? Not only is this guy an NBA All-Star, but he's a professional bucket getter. Pound mm -hmm. for pound, one of the greatest scores that the league has seen. Please welcome Isaiah <laughs> Thomas to Jalen and Jacoby. Appreciate you joining us, family. Hey, it's all love. I, pre I always wanted to come on the show, so, you know, I had to do it now. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Now, I have to make this personal. You scored 81 in the Pro-Am <laughs> in Seattle. Was that a diss to Jalen? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I knew if I scored that, I'd be welcome on the show, so I had to get it done. <laughs> he knew the entry fees, but that was not by no means a fluke because you just had 60 plus in the previous game. So just talk about you now being healthy from your hip surgery and all of the things you've endured over the last couple of years to really looking good playing the game again. Man, I'm in, I'm in a great mental space again. Physically, I'm back 100%. Like, honestly, I never thought I would feel this way again. So it's only right to, you know, make a summer tour about it, let the whole world see it. And then, you know, hopefully get 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 a call and get back in the NBA. You know, that's the ultimate plan. And that's the only plan. So I'm just trying to show the world I'm back healthy, back in a good mental space and ready for whatever role the NBA can give me. Listen, when you score 65 in Atlanta and then 81 in Seattle, that's a great way to show the world that you're back playing ball. Have you received any interest? Yeah, have you received any interest? Have you, have you had any calls from NBA teams that are interested? Yeah, I've been talking about four teams. So, you know, hopefully mm. something shakes soon. But, you know, these games can only help because more and more people see that, you know, I'm back to looking like myself. I'm back to feeling like myself. And like I keep saying, I'm just in a great place mentally and physically. And I'm ready for whatever opportunity presents itself coming this coming NBA season. NBA execs and fans and media, come closer. I got to tell y'all a secret. Isaiah Thomas is only 32 years of age. And you see a resurgence of veteran guards with a Chris Paul, a Kyle Lowry, getting big deals and playing quality minutes for their teams. So what do you think and feel as you see these guys still getting those opportunities, knowing that if and when yours come, you're gonna take advantage of it? Um, you know, it gives me confidence knowing that, you know, there's still some older guys in the league. And, you know, they'll say, I'm old, I'm still only 32. My body's like 28 because I haven't played in four years, really. Mm. So, you know, I'm just I'm just uh, waiting for the opportunity. You know, I, I pat those guys on the back like Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, Mike Conley. They, you mm -hmm. know, keep getting paid and keep showing that they're so productive. They got to be out there. So it's only right that, you know, my name gets called at some point. And I know when my name does get called, I'm going to take advantage of it and take mm -hmm. and, and, and take advantage of the opportunity and run with it. Well, you might go from patting these guys on the back to covering them very, very soon. There are some rumors that you might have a reunion with the Massachusetts, Boston area and the Celtics. What truth is there to that? <laughs> you know, there's a little talk about that. So, you know, I, I think the world wants that to happen because it only yes. makes sense. But 
you know, if that opportunity presents itself, you know, I know I can help that team, especially them young guys over there, Jalen, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I, I know I can help, but you know, I'm just trying to present myself in a way that, you know, I can show the teams that I'm healthy in any role that's given to me. So that's all I'm doing. Um, and hopefully that call comes and, you know, I'll be ready to take it back to the top. And I have to tell you this, my brother, it's more, it's the score of the game and it's the game of life. I appreciate how you've always handled yourself with, McCla with class, with maturity. You've been a really good teammate. You've really been a good locker room guy. And so it's refreshing for me to see people like you get healthy and now be able to reinvent yourself. Kind of like I saw with Carmelo in Portland. But I have to ask you something about his new team, the Lakers. A lot of people are wondering if Russ and LeBron are gonna be able to mesh. What are your thoughts about the Lakers and what they've done with their roster this offseason? Um, I think they're getting ready for that NBA, you know, that NBA championship run. You know, mm. the guys that they got on their team, they're they're playoff ready. You know, they've been in every situation possible. So when it comes to the moment, nothing's too big for them. So a guy like Westbrook and LeBron. Like people are saying, you know, those guys are too old. They might not be able to mesh. Those are killers, bro. They're mm -hmm. going to figure it out. And, it, you know, if they get put in the right situation come playoff time, you know, teams is going to be scared to play them boys for real. I want to ask you a question about the East. Now, of course, we're going to pick whatever team you get picked up by because <laughs> we got love for you. But for right now, who's beating the Nets in the East? If they're healthy, nobody's beating the Nets. We all know that. We're, we're, mm. we're basketball minds. You know, we, mm. we we love the game of basketball. If they are healthy, which is, you know, a big if, because we've seen that this, you know, this offseason, I mean, this playoffs, like, it's going to be tough to beat them boys because they, they, they got arguably the best three isolation players, scorers, offensive mm -hmm. players that ever, we ever seen play the game. So, you know, if they're healthy, it's going to be tough to beat them guys. Unless, you know, I'm playing against them boys. We're going to... Yeah. Gonna, we got to get a little call for them right here. That, is, that <laughs> part, all, all, I know, all I know is we got a guy on our show right now that average 30 in the league. Mm. 30, okay? Come NBA on. team's 30, and he's only 32. Mike Conley, my guy, is 33. I'm just saying. And we're talking about one of the best isolation scorers. You have to put yourself on that list. And Jamal Crawford. Both of y'all need to be in the league next yeah. year. But I have a All simple facts. question for you. Where are you, dog? What is this view? What is this background? <laughs> like, look at your crib, hey, man. Hey, Where look, are you? It looks like I'm on vacation, but I'm back home in Seattle, Tacoma. You know, it just looks like this <laughs> in the summertime. It look, like I tell everybody, if you want to come to this area, come in the summertime, man. You might not leave. Well, the NBA... Definitely is going to be a better place when a team signs you, my brother. And Jacoby pointed to your visual. I'll just say, you look like you're living your best life. And that makes me so very happy. I love seeing my friends look and act and be rich. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, it's all love. I, hey, I appreciate you guys, man. You know, I'm coming back like Jada Kids did on the verses. If Ooh, they give me a chance, you know, bars. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show this is legendary, baby. I'm coming back. I'm coming Love back. It. It's only a Love matter it. of time. Love you that. heard it here first on Jalen Jacoby. Isaiah Thomas said he's coming back like Jada Kiss did on the verses. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. That's love. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. The best show in the biz right here. Thank you. NFL MVP is with the Packers, but he will not be playing the preseason, which means a lot of Jordan Love. We'll talk about what to expect from Love and the Packers right after this. Stay tuned.